into my house? Who do others say that you aren't preached in this place? On God, if you want God to look at you, the first thing you got to do is be humble, be broken. Isaiah says in Isaiah 66, and the last one is a tremble at his word, humble and broken if you want God to look at you. Who do others say that you are, friend? Don't fall into that trap. When Charisma Magazine was here doing an article on this revival, they were blown away. They cried all the way through this revival because they've been traveling all over the world. They sent their top reporter up here, stayed for five days, and this is what he said. He cried all the way through it. Cried. Cried through the testimonies. Cried during the revival. Cried during the private times with people. Want to know why? He said, nobody is anybody here. As a matter of fact, it came time, Don, you got to hear this, man, because it came time for him to be interviewed. John Kilpatrick. Going to be interviewed, you know. They're doing a big spread on this revival coming out next month. Major spread. Came time to interview the pastor. Pastor walked in there. Pastor had a busy schedule. He's a pastor. He marries people and buries people and loves on people, prays for people, cares for people. He's a pastor. He comes in. And he had to go to the hospital. There's someone in the hospital hurting. So he goes in at 3 o'clock for his appointment with Charisma. Charisma's here at the church with somebody else, one of the drug addicts that had been saved, still talking with her. Pastor comes in. He goes, I can't hang around. i got to go to the hospital. He leaves. Charisma comes out a few minutes later and says, where's John Kilpatrick? They said, he, he, he left. He told me. Lee Grady said, Never in my life has anyone ever stood me up. Everybody wants front page of charisma. Everyone wants the front cover. Everybody wants his picture in charisma. Everybody wants, man, they'll stand in line all night long because it has millions of people reading it. No, man, it doesn't matter. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter, friend. We didn't solicit an article from anybody. Never have, never will. I don't care what people think we are. I know it's the grace of God that we make it day by day. It's the grace of God that we eat, that we drink, that we breathe. And if you think we come into this place, and I'm going to close in just a minute, friends. If you think we come into this place arrogant, I come in this place broken every night. I go, God, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Wash me tonight, Jesus. Pour out your spirit just one more night, Jesus. Would you do it for us, Jesus? Just one more time. Would you bless us, Jesus? Because we don't deserve this. We don't deserve this, Lord God, but would you do it one more time? Who do others say that you are? Don't listen to it, friends. Don't listen to them, man. The last point tonight, Charity, I want you to get ready to sing. We're right on time, friends, so don't look at your watch. All right, everybody look at your watch. <laughs> Everyone say, oh, my. I'm going to nail it down right now. This is a pop quiz. Who do you think you are? I want, to uns I, want to, I want to unsettle you right now, friend. Most of us in this room, we just need to basically understand that we, we're, a, we're a stench. We are a stench, man. Let God do a work in your heart tonight, friend. Who do others say you are? Don't even listen to that. If they're degrading you, don't listen to them. And if they're lifting you up, don't listen to them. Listen to God. What does he say about you? What's God say about you? I want to tell you, you're his creation. There's a lot of good stuff he say about you. But the last point tonight, and I'm closing with this, who you really are. This is who you really are. Now, there's four types of people. We've classified this in this room, and I'm not going to go through them in detail. But there are people who are close to the truth, people who are distant from the truth, people who have known the truth but have backslid, and people who have known the truth, and the truth has set them free. I'm going to say that again. People are close to the truth. Some of you are so close, but you're not there yet. You walk right up to the line, but you haven't stepped over. 
Your heart tonight has gone from a natural heart to an awakened heart. Your heart has awakened tonight. You're open to the Spirit of the Lord moving in your heart. It's awakened, but you've got to go from an awakened heart into a believing heart. Your, an awakened heart will not save you. You can't leave out of here and go, never in my life, honey, have I been in anything so good as that revival. You are not changed, friend. That's not change. That's an awakened heart. A believing heart is when you go, I came in here with a hard, cold, natural heart. The Spirit of the Lord pricked me like arrows, and now it's been awakened. My heart is awakened to the truth, but now, Jesus... I want to step from that. I want to receive you, Jesus. I want to receive you as my Savior. You're moving from an awakened heart into a believing heart. People who are close to the truth, people who are distant from the truth. Some of you, the last thing on your mind was going to get saved, was to, be, to get saved tonight, but that's what's going to happen to you in just a few minutes. You are distant from the truth, but you're like the woman with Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well. She was just going to get some water, man. She left out meeting God. Some of you came here just to pass the time of day with your friends. You're going to leave out of here knowing the one who will never leave you nor forsake you. The greatest friend you'll ever meet, he's about to be introduced to you. There's people in this place that have known the truth but have backslid, like prodigal son. And then those in this place that know the Lord. But who you really are, I've given you four categories but there's really, in reality, only two. Only two. Look at me, everybody. Only two. And if these sons of Sceva could teach us something tonight, friends, I could line them up in this place, and every one of them would say these two points right here. They would say, it don't matter who you think you are. I could see them all pacing back and forth like this. And it doesn't matter what the people think you are. And every one of them would echo these words right here. There's only two categories. There's only two classifications when it comes to the soul-hungry demons of hell. Those who know the Lord and those who don't. Those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and those who haven't been washed in the blood of the Lamb, those who are known in hell and those who aren't. If you're blood-washed, on fire, testifying, God-seeking, interceding, spirit-filled, hell-gate-shaking, front-line warrior for Jesus, then you are known in hell. Who are you? Only two classifications, friend. Got it? You better fit into this one tonight, friend. I want to tell you what's about to happen in America. Visiting students from Baldwin High, or Baldwin, y'all from Baldwin High, aren't you? Baldwin County? God bless you for coming. Let me tell you something. Some of you young people, listen to me good. I love you dearly. But some of you go to church, you sing the hymns, you sit there, you're a wallflower in that church. I want to tell you something, friend. You don't know God. You don't know God. And if I had you come down here and I stuck a demon-possessed person in front of you, Satan would attack you and rip you to shreds. You want to know why? Because you don't know the Lord. You may know religion. You may know the hymns of the church. You may be a choir boy. You may be an acolyte in the Lutheran church. You may be a deacon's son. You may be the pastor's son at the local Baptist church. But if you don't know Jesus, Satan will rip you to shreds. There's only two kinds of people, those who know the Lord and those who don't. The religious crowd Raven Hill would have told you if he was alive today, I'm going to speak for him. The religious crowd hangs around the cross. The true church gets on the cross. There's a big difference between hanging around the cross and getting on the cross. America. America hangs around the cross. We're going to give an altar call. Those of you that are away from God, you need Jesus Christ to forgive you. Listen up in the chapel, at home, and in this main auditorium. I'm going to give you the opportunity to know the Lord. Who do you think you are? Who do people say that you are? 
Don't tell me what you do. Don't tell me you're the head cheerleader. I want to know who you are. Do you know the Lord or do you not know the Lord? Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who are you? Are you known in hell? Do they know you down there? Are you table talk in hell? Does Satan even look your way? Some of you say the devil's after me. Forget it, friend. He left you a long time ago. You're doing fine on your own. Some of you are so arrogant. I'm talking about the arrogant ones in this place. You think you're so important, you're so bad, man, that the devil's just full-time on your case. He's not omnipresent, friend. Satan can't be all over the place at the same time. You think he's spending his whole time with you because you're so important. Some of you, he wouldn't even waste a demon on you. You're going to go to hell on your own. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Well, I hope you've come out of your daydream. I hope you heard the pop quiz. I hope you've answered the questions. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to respond, friend. I want to tell you something. This is going to affect your final grade. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is the difference between an A and an F. <laughs> We're talking A's and F's here, friend. Those of you that are away from God in this place, there's sin in your life and you know there is. There's something between you and the Lord. This is your chance to get an A on your report card, man. This is your opportunity to get right with God. Don't tell me how religious you are. That's what you do. I'm asking you, who are you? Do you know the Lord? If I stood, and by the way, the devil comes to this revival. If somehow I could make him appear and stand before us right now. I'd love to line this congregation up and have you go by him. Matter of fact, this is what I'd like to do. The other day we had that tunnel of grace or prayer. What was that called? Tunnel of faith. People walk through this on Sunday morning. They walk through a tunnel of God-fearing men and women, and they're being prayed for. We had thousands go through this tunnel. I'd like to see what would happen if demons lined up. One on it just like that, arcing. And I said, all right, congregation, line up. And you all go through this tunnel. Some of you would scream, Jesus, you'd do this, you'd do that, and they wouldn't even budge. Want to know why? You're going, the Jesus that Steve knows. The Jesus that my pastor knows all about. The Jesus of the Bible. They look at you, friend, they're going to eat your lunch. But those of you that know the Lord, you can walk right up to that line and go, make way. Whoa! 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 Ho! 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 You could plow right through that, friend, because you know the Lord. You are Jesus to them, man. He's all over you. He's in you. You live for him. You know the Lord. I want everyone to stand. Charity, come here. Don't you walk out that back door. Unless you gotta go to the bathroom bad. Stay in this church. I want to tell you, if you got a friend that's gonna go out right now, wants to walk out that door, grab him. Grab him. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to come to Jesus, those of you that are away from God. You're going to respond to the Lord right now. You're standing in the chapel here and at home. You stand at home also. The Bible says you honor God, he'll honor you. When the judge walks in, you stand up. But I've added a couple stanzas to a poem that I'm going to read in closing right now. 
that God gave me the other day. I'm going to read this, and then we're going to give this altar call. Charity's going to sing. After this altar call, we're going to pray with hundreds of people that came forward, and then we're going to pray for everyone here who wants special prayer. But in just a minute, you better move, sir. You better move, ma'am. If you're not right with God in this place, this is your opportunity right now. Tomorrow may never come. Yesterday is history. All you have is N-O-W. That's all you have is now. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to sit right here in my place, not going to budge, make no mistake. You've made your plea, preacher, of this I've heard. To no avail your urgent words, I'm going to stay in my seat tonight. I don't believe the time is right. There's so much more for me to do. I must live it up before life's through. My heart is pounding, but that's okay. I'll quench the spirit. He'll go away. I don't need God to interfere with plans and dreams I hold so dear. The guilt I feel deep down inside has surfaced during this evening's ride. I'll coast from here to home sweet home and forget about this time alone you cause my heart to melt tonight your cry is urgent come make it right but preacher man let's make it clear I don't believe his coming's near the message tonight on who you are has struck me deep through and through but I can't come and make it right there's got to be another night all this talk on devils of hell it must be true far as I can tell I've watched him kill my friend so dear he's closing in I feel him near there's much much more time for me to think about my soul and the missing link don't rush me now with your zealous plea I'm out of here I'm gonna flee don't get me wrong I know it's true deep down inside I want him too but something's holding me from grace there's another spirit in this place I'm going to nail that right now. Some of you, when I give this altar call, there's going to be a detaining spirit, man. Spirit from hell is going to grab a hold of your arm and whisper in your ear and say, don't you do it now. Don't you do it. You're all right. You're all right. This will pass. I just got finished telling you, friends, do not listen to what others say about you. Don't listen to the demons of hell telling you everything's all right. They've paved the way to hell with that statement. Everything's going to be all right. Don't get me wrong, I know it's true. Deep down inside, I want him to. But something's holding me from grace. There's another spirit in this place. A voice is telling me to stay right in my seat. Don't budge today. This one has said, relax and wait. He says there'll be another date. I'm telling you again, my friend, your life is coming to an end. The day we're born, we start to die, and Lucifer's the reason why. The devil's laid before your eyes, a pack of pleasure, a list of lies. As long as one thing stays from view, the blood of Jesus will never do. You're sitting in your seat tonight. Sign away your soul, begin to write. But before the destroyer gets your life and time, read the fine print below the line. It reads so clear, don't miss a word. He'll damn your soul tonight, you've heard. He'll give you plenty to enjoy, but in the end, your soul's his toy. He'll crank you up and send you down to his fiery furnace below the ground. You'll remember well this Friday night when the preacher said, come make it right. So you're going to sit right in your place, not going to budge, make no mistake. I plead with you, don't try to run. Now is the time. Get up and come. I love you dearly, friend, but you needed tonight a preacher to speak to your heart. Charity is going to sing, run to the mercy seat. Look at me, everyone, here in the chapel and at home. If you need Jesus to wash your sins away, if you need Jesus to forgive you, you have got to move when this altar call opens. As soon as Charity begins to sing, run to the mercy seat, you run as quickly as you can. Don't play games with God. Don't stand there and say, well, maybe another day. No, friend. He spoke to your heart right now. There's young people in this room. You're dealing with sins. You go home and shut the door, and all hell breaks loose in your bedroom. You know what I'm talking about. There's sin in your life. Sir, there's sin in your life. Ma'am, there's sin in your life. You don't know the Lord. You need to know him. Jesus died for you 2,000 years ago, friend. He shed his blood on Calvary. You've heard the message tonight five, ten times. Through song, 
pastor spoke tonight on the healing. I'm sharing with you, God loves you and has a plan for your life. What more do you want? We have intercessors praying for you right now. They're weeping for your soul. They're praying for your friend. As soon as this altar call is open, well, I don't want to come down there. I want to tell you something, friend. Look at me, everybody. Some of you are so stinking rebellious. I want to tell you how, how you stink, man. If I held up $1,000 right now, and I said, everyone who wants $1,000, just come down and touch this. And my secretary, Ronnie, is here tonight, and she'll write everyone a check for $1,000 that touches this, this, this piece of money right here. Some of you that are afraid or you're ashamed or you're prideful to come down to this altar call, you'd step right out from where you're at and come down and get that money. You want to know why? That's where your heart's at. You'll come in front of all these people and grab that money. Why? That's where your heart's at. Don't talk to me about pride. Don't tell me about it, friend. You want Jesus Christ, you step out from your seat and you come down here and say, Jesus, I need you now. As soon as charity begins to sing, this is not an option. I'm not giving you a choice. You come down here and break before the Lord and say, Jesus, forgive me. Come as quick as you can right now. I need the Lord. Who do you think you are? Come on, friend. Come on now. I need the Lord. Let's go. Let's go. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. I face come on, yes, yes, come on, 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 in the balcony, let's go, let's go, let's go. I need Jesus, 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 I need Jesus. 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 come on, come on, in the chapel, in the chapel, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. He said that I could come into his presence without fear. Into Come on. the holy place where his mercy hovers near. Come on. I'm a running. Come on. I'm running. Come on. I'm Come running on. to Come on. the mercy seat where Jesus is calling. He said his grace would cover Come me. On. His blood will the lonely land. Come on. It will provide Come the on. healing. Turn to stop. Turn the music off. Friend, I ain't gonna wait all night. You hear me? Y'all are gonna trickle down here until there's 400 people down here. That's what you're gonna do, you're gonna trickle. Boy, how would you like God to treat you like that? How would you like God to treat you like that? You want something from God? He goes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need it now. He's going, huh, uh-huh, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I need it now, Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll trickle you a little now, I'll trickle a little later. How'd you like to treat God like that? Be good to God, he'll be good to you, friend. God's dealing with your heart. Get yourself down here, man. He's trying to save your soul. He's trying to deliver you. Step out right now. Step out right now. Come on, right now. Come on, step out right now. I need Jesus. Don't sing, Charity. I want you to stay. Just God's going to move right now. Come on. Come on. Come on down. Yeah, come on. Come on. Workers, I want you to come in line right here. Come on. Come on. I need Jesus tonight. I need Jesus tonight. I need Jesus tonight. I need Jesus tonight. Some of you need to shake, shake the devil right off you, man. Step out. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the chapel, let's go. In the chapel. Come on, buddy. Keep coming. Young man, your heart's doing this. Matter of fact, I'm going to walk through this congregation right now. If you're away from God, you better step out right now, friend. Step out right now. Come on. Yeah, come on down. As a matter of fact, everyone turn to the person next to them, and you ask them if they need Jesus Christ to wash their sins away. They need forgiveness. And both of you, come down right now. Bring them down with you right now. Turn to the person next to you and ask them if they need forgiveness. And bring them down right now. Bring them down right now. Bring them down right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You kids from Baldwin High, you better be right with God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jesus I know and Paul I know. 
But who are you? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Do you know the Lord? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You hear your heart? That's called conviction. God's touching your life, man. Hey, look at me. He brought you here. You know that, don't you? Let's get up there and get right with God, man. All right? Friends. Boy, you know, I think I can pick some of you folks out in here. Come on, see, this? look at this, man. Y'all going to be here till midnight doing this. I know it. He said there's a bunch coming down from the back. Yo, I want to tell you what you're doing, friend. You're wheeling and dealing with God. If you want forgiveness, if you want Jesus Christ to cleanse your heart, get down here now in the chapel. Get down here now. Yeah, come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You kids from Baldwin, I want to tell you I love you, but I want to tell you, if, if I lined you up and put Lucifer in front of you, would he tear you to shreds or would he run when you walked up? Ask yourself that question. And if you don't know the answer of it, if you can't say for sure that he would run, you need to be down here. You need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. You need to have the power of Jesus Christ all over you. The sons of Sceva are trying to talk to you tonight. Who do you think you are? Get down here right now. Come on. Come on. Come on, right now. Come on. Where's our drummer? Where's our drummer? Why don't you beat that drum on 60 seconds? I'm closing this altar call, Fred. I'm fed up with you. All right? I'll well, tell you what I'm doing right now. If you don't come down in this 60 seconds right here, Richard, I don't know how many of them have come in the chapel, but I'm closing this call. You're still trickling down. I'm going to tell you when to start, brother. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to get down here and get right with God, and then I'm closing this altar call. I'm going to close it right in front of your very eyes. How can you do that, Brother Steve? It's easy. I close it. Just like that. The book of Ezekiel says, I'm held responsible for you. Your blood is on my hands until I preach the word, give you the opportunity to respond, and then my, your blood is no longer on my hands. It's on your hands, friend. There's some religious folks in this church. I want to tell you, church member, you better look at where your heart's at, not where your membership card's at. Where's your heart? Young people, come on down, man. You kill. Come on. I want to get right with God tonight. I want to get right with God tonight. Come on, let's go. Where are you at with the Lord? God bless you. I'm going to give you 60 seconds, starting right now. Fifty-five seconds. You have 50 seconds. 45 seconds. My, how time flies. Get down here. Yes, come on. 35 seconds. You have just blown a half a minute. Get down here and get right with God. You have 25 seconds. Come on. Yes, girl. Come on. Come on. Yes, over here. Let's go. Congregation, encourage them on, would you? Let's go. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one.
Where y'all from over here? Do y'all come together, some of you? Where are you from? Yeah. Perdido? Fairhope? Welcome, man. Where are you from? Baldwin County. You from Baldwin County High? Did you come with that group up there? How many came with that group up there? Raise your hand down here. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Some more over here. Are they in the aisles over there? Move over this way some. Y'all are just scrunched. How many are from Baldwin High, Baldwin County High? Raise your hand again. Some, a bunch of them are on the floor right here. God bless you. Look at that. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. We're going to pray right now, friends. Do we have a pianist tonight? Could you come and join us on the piano? I want everyone at the altar to bow your head right now. We're going to pray and ask Jesus Christ to wash our sins away, to wash us clean tonight. You're going to ask, you're going to repent. Some of you are backslidden. You're so far from God. Others of you have never known the Lord. You pray this prayer right now and ask Jesus Christ to forgive your sin, to change your life right now. Pray with me out loud here in the chapel. In the chapel, you pray with me right now. Dear Jesus, once again, dear Jesus, thank you for speaking to my heart. Thank you for not leaving me alone. Thank you that you have told me who I really am. I want to know you. I want to know the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. I want to know you, Jesus. Tonight, I ask you to forgive me. I repent of all those things I've done wrong. Wash my sins away. Wash me clean tonight. Make me new. I repent, Lord. Forgive me. I have hurt you, and I've hurt others. Tonight, Lord Jesus, I want you to come be my Savior, my Lord, and my very best friend. I give myself to you 100% tonight. From this moment on, I am yours, and you are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I want everyone at the altar to stand. Everyone to stand at the altar. Everyone at the altar to stand. Everyone in the chapel, you stand. Let me tell you what the Lord told me just a few minutes ago. There's about 200 more that are supposed to be down here. You're supposed to be down here. You're backslid, you're away from God. But I want to tell you something, friend. The clock is tipping away. It's just ticking, ticking, ticking. And there's nothing I can do to change you. You're going to have to respond to the Lord. Rebellious person, you're going to dwell in dry land. Look at me. It's going to get hotter and drier. You rebelled against God tonight. I'm going home at peace. I'm going home clean as a whistle. I'm going home. I'm going to lay my head on the bed tonight. Go to sleep at peace. And you're not. You're not at peace with God. How can you live like that? How can you live like that? Well, I just don't believe all this stuff. Friend, when are you going to wake up? When are you going to wake up? Life is more than boats and cars. Life is more than money and houses. Life is more than a steak dinner. Life is more than the clothes you wear, friend. One day, you're going to be like all the other people I've buried. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to be laying there. And you're one of those folks, friend, that on your dying bed in the hospital, you want to know what you'll you want to talk to me about? You could care less about your boat. You, you don't call the stockbroker in. You don't call your business parts in. You know who you call in? You call in the preacher. Want to know why? You don't care about this earthly stuff no more. You're dying of terminal cancer. You want to know about God. 
Don't rebel against the Lord. A few things to every one of you that came forward tonight. God bless you for responding. Come to this revival as much as you can. Get involved in this revival as much as you can. You kids from Baldwin, I want to tell you what I want you to do. You need to thank God your friends brought you tonight. And you need to come, you need to go to that school, and you need to bring dozens and dozens to this revival. You're going to see their life change before their very eyes. Before your very eyes, you're going to see their life change. You bring them. Come to this revival tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Come, bring a friend tomorrow night. The second thing I want to share with you is this. Get involved in a strong local church that preaches the Bible. Young people, those of you that were rebellious that go to church and you gave your life to God, Sunday morning, sit on the front row. Blow your pastor's mind. Sit on the front row and take this chewing gum out of your mouth. And you look at the pastor and amen him when he's preaching. Those of you that don't have a local church, ask our worker. They'll tell you where you can go to church. We'll help you. If you want to go to this church, you're welcome here at Brownsville. But go to church. The last point tonight is be baptized. Be baptized. Workers, those of, the, those of you that want to be baptized here, tell the one with the purple badge that you want to be baptized. You don't have to call the church office. Tell the one that you're with right now, I want to be baptized at the Brownsville Revival. That is an outward expression of an inward act that took place in your heart. I'd like for every one of you to turn around right now and spend a few minutes with that person wearing that badge. Tonight, many of you have come tonight to be prayed for. Please do not leave right now. The service is not over. We want to be sure that everyone that's come tonight is prayed for. So please, please do not leave tonight. We'll be with you in just a few moments, but have the courtesy to wait upon those who have come to the altar tonight. But you will be prayed for. And once again, I say, please do not leave. The service is not over. It's just beginning. It might go until 2 or 3 o'clock this morning. So just stay and wait. God bless you as you're waiting.
For those of you who have never been to Brownsville's Revival and you'd like to have prayer tonight, we want you to come forward now. If you've never been prayed for here at the Revival, if you'll come up the aisles, please come up to the center aisle, the side aisles. Please do not block the aisles. You're very precious. We want to be sure that you're prayed for. There's an awesome anointing that's been falling in this sanctuary since Father's Day, and you're entitled to your portion too. First time visitors, you've never been prayed for before. Come quickly, please. Come quickly. And those of you who are sitting there tonight who have been prayed for before, you've been to Brownsville Revival before, please don't leave. We want to be sure you're prayed for tonight too. Quickly, come all the way to the front. If you'll push around to the left and the right side of the altar, you've never been prayed for. You're here for the first time tonight. We want to be sure that you're prayed for. That's the heart of Pastor and and, and, and Brother Steve, is that no one leaves without a touch of this anointing. And please don't leave tonight if you don't have to. First time visitors, please come all the way up front, if you will. First time you've ever been to Brownsville Revival, we want to be sure you're prayed for first. Now, those of you who have come for the first time, if I can have your attention for just a moment, please do not let anyone pray for you that does not have this purple badge. The same for you that are in the chapel, please do not let anyone pray for you that does not have this purple badge. And the reason for that is we don't know who people are anymore. There's so many strange faces, and we want to be sure that no one lays hands on you.